are two ready. Take. Kalasha International Film and TV Awards are here, and the nominees are out. Best host in a TV show. Alex Chawada. Remember, Kalasha Awards is one of the biggest film festivals in the region, and that's why they call it the Kenyan Oscars, a subject that is so relevant to what we are talking about in this particular episode, Resilient Filmmakers. Now, on 1st September this year, Kenya bagged six awards out of the eight categories nominated for this year's Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards, AMVCA, in Lagos, Nigeria. We left a footprint there, they knew Kenyans were there. So what does these awards mean to the Kenyan film industry? It actually means for the Kenyan market, we can see beyond just Kenya. So it's not just about the Kenyan industry, now it becomes about the African industry. Slow down, just take a deep breath. There's a buzz around filmmaking in Kenya and someone out there who is serious about it, this is the time to come in. Well, this is a continuation of a conversation we had some times back, the film Conversation. On this particular show, we are celebrating resilient filmmakers who are putting Kenya on the global map in Matas film. But first, let's have our fact sheet where we sample some of the most popular film festivals across the globe. Film festivals bring together actors, directors and producers through awards and recognition of their contribution to the advancement of the film industry. Some of them include Venice Film Festival, founded in 1932 in Italy. Others are Berlin International Film Festival, held in Germany and founded in 1951. Melbourne International Film Festival, held in Australia, founded in 1952. The Academy Awards, that is popularly known as Oscars, and which was first awarded in 1929. In 2014, Lupita Nyong'o won in the category of Best Supporting Actress in the movie 12 Years a Slave. There is also the Keynes Festival held in Keynes, France. It was founded in 1946. The Sundance Film Festival founded in 1978. Sundance Festival takes place annually in Park City, Utah. With over 46,000 attendees in 2016, Sundance is the largest independent film festival in the United States. In Africa, the major film festivals are Zanzibar International Film Festival, which was started in 1997 with the aim of developing and promoting film. It is also a major catalyst for economic and social growth given its international outlook. The Rwandan Film Festival, also known as Hollywood, it was established in 2004. It is also one of the most celebrated Rwandese cultural events with up to 90% of the films acted in Kenya, Rwanda. There is also the Africa Magic Viewers' Choice Awards. This is an annual accolade presented by MultiChoice, recognizing outstanding achievements in television and film. The inaugural Africa Magic Viewers' Choice Awards ceremony was held in Lagos in Nigeria on 9th March 2013. Kalasha Film and TV Awards and the nominees are In Kenya, Kalasha International Awards is organized by the Kenya Film Commission. The inaugural awards were held in 2010. This year marks the ninth edition of uh, Kalasha Awards and uh, to us Kalasha is uh, a very critical component of the industry because we reward the best in all aspects of filmmaking in the country. We had 178 films, uh, short films, feature films, animation, TV dramas, TV shows, documentaries and talk shows. As jury, we've done our, pa our part. We have given uh, the audience the best and we are hoping that voters will be able to help us decide on who is the best. For the Tomoda Report, I'm Michael Zimaja. Can you want big at Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards AMVCA in Lagos, Nigeria? I have a priority one. The movie 18 Hours scooped three awards. That is Best Overall Movie in Africa, Best Movie in East Africa, and Mark Minor, the editor of the movie, scooped the Best Picture Editor category. 
Others included Best Actress Nis Wanjeri, who casts as Shiro on comedy TV show Anti Boss. Dennis Miner scooped the Best Documentary Award for his documentary The Flesh Business. And Best Indigenous Language Movie went to Sarika Hemi for the movie Supermodo. We sat down with some of the Kenyan winners of the 2018 AMVCA to understand their journey in film production. Dennis Miner talks to us about the making of Flesh Business. There is a stage uh, whereby I'm a tattoo terminal, whereby I used to like, you know, connect to my place. And it's a, it's a hotspot for the ladies of the night. So I was there at around midnight waiting for Amatatu to go home. Then this little girl approaches me uh, and she, you know, she was like, Niaje brother si Tuzame. Now those from Mombasa know what Tuzame is, you know. So I, I, I told her, no, thank you. And uh, then uh, uh, she countered uh, and she was like, you cannot say thank you when I've not even told you the prize. Then I was like, okay, this is, this is interesting. So, but, but, but now I, I brushed her off. Then she quoted a figure. She told me 200 shillings. Then I was like, wait, what? I told her, but I still told her, no, thanks. Then she went a little bit lower. She said 150 shillings, you know, uh, let's go. I, I just brushed her off as, you know, uh, I was not interested in that. Then now she got aggressive and she tell me, listen, don't play games with me. I've been on these streets the whole day. I've not eaten. I've not, uh, I've not uh, you know, uh, there's a kid at home that is waiting for me. Uh, I have to find food for myself, for the kid, for, so 100 shillings, take or leave. You know, so it, it's patterned me, uh, or rather I was, uh, how does somebody uh, devalue themselves to the point whereby they are selling their bodies for 100 shillings. Then now, uh, as a creative, I felt the urge to tell that story. For Dennis, it was more than documenting the story. His ability to go an extra mile in producing flesh business made his documentary stand out. The key point towards this docu standing out is, uh, is, uh, is not only highlighting their plight, you know, but also uh, went a little bit further and even, actually even followed up uh, the story uh, because some of them uh, are into this uh, profession not because they want to be, but it's some, some form of challenges that they go through life that make them there. So I took it upon myself again uh, to engage uh, either county governments or people that were willing because one of them was like, you know, uh, if I am to go back to school, I would. And as we speak, uh, she's doing her class eight this year. Uh, yes, as a result of that docu, because uh, the county government of Mombasa again uh, took it upon themselves to take her through rehabilitation. Because again, it's it's very hard to just pluck somebody off the streets and take them to a class or you know give them some money to start some form of business. They'll they'll squander this money or they'll you know. So they went through. Uh, she went through a rehabilitation process, uh, and. Uh, She's doing something meaningful with her life. We need to know where you are. Esther, you have to slow down. Phoebe Rogoru and Kevin Joy, part of the team behind AMVCA Best Movie in Africa, talk of their word as a vote of confidence in Kenya's film industry. It means that, you know, in Nigeria they connected with the film, we connect to their film, so it actually means for the Kenyan market we can see beyond just Kenya. So it's not just about the Kenyan industry, now it becomes about the African industry. And I think that's, that's what's exciting about it, you know, we don't have to just look inwards and think about Kenya alone. I think we should start to look um, at East Africa and Africa. 18 Hours was a concept that started back in 2015, October, when um, I read a newspaper article on the Daily Nation um, written by Eunice Kilonza, and it was a story about the late Alex Madaga, who had an accident on Waiyaki Way, and um, Brian Odhiambo took him in an ambulance, and they took him around different hospitals in the, in the country. 
in Nairobi actually specifically and he couldn't get admission to different hospitals for different reasons so after reading the article that's when you know I started thinking about you know the story why and I felt sad about the story and you know I thought what what can I as a person and we as a team do to make a difference so we decided to make the film so that's when Again, with the same partners, Phoebe Rogo and Bill Afwani, and together we are Rock Pictures. We decided this this will be the next film we make. 18 Hours, a movie that took the market by storm, perhaps because it was inspired by true events, something that Kenyans could relate with. The reception of the film from Kenyans was, I'll say, brilliant. Because um, one, we we went for six weeks in the cinema, so that's something. It means, and the, the policy with, with distributors and exhibitors is, if there's a demand, we'll keep showing it. I'm sure most people went with the expectation that a Nigerian film would have won. So it definitely, even for, for Nigerians, it said, oh, okay, look, there, there's competition coming from the East. And I think that's a really good thing, because I see competition as a very good thing. I'm very positive about it, and I think that's what will actually help all the industries grow. Because I think um, Nigeria has definitely paved the way for a lot of filmmakers. And uh, now when we all meet, we can do so much more. <laughs> well, for the film industry in Kenya to do much better, several issues have to be addressed. On the second part of this show, we are going to look at these issues. These film schools need to be more. We would like to have a framework, a legal framework that will be able to guide the industry uh, with consideration of the current state of affairs in terms of technology. We understand that what is killing the industry is multiplicity of licenses. Welcome back to the program. Remember, on this show, we are celebrating resilient filmmakers who are putting Kenya on the global map in Matters Film. And so remember to use the hashtag resilient filmmakers. Now, despite the success stories we've highlighted on the first part of this show, filmmakers say it has not been a walk in the park. They have had to endure several challenges before making it big in the industry. It had its challenges from the beginning, from sourcing for funding, trying to convince people that there's an industry or we're building something. Um, that was challenging, but it, you know, when we started, okay, I'll so maybe I'll talk about funding and say, you know, uh, looking for funding is never an easy thing, especially if you're, you know, you're not in an industry that's proven itself to be very commercially viable. So in kind of presenting to investors and saying, you know, there's hope, there's opportunity here, that's, that's very difficult um, because, you know, they want numbers, they want to know, okay, yeah, you say there's an industry, but what have, <laughs> you know, what's the, what are the numbers and such? And um, so, but, you know, that was difficult, but we got investors. We got some good, great Kenyan investors who um, connected with the story that we were trying to tell. They saw the opportunities in the industry, and you know they said, "Okay, it's risky, but we'll enter. We'll we'll do this with you." Um, and that's a very important thing to have in this industry, especially at this point. Um, so that's one of the challenges. I think you always typical challenges. You know, we were shooting at night, uh, but. It, Everything <laughs> we we saw everything, um, and that's why I think you know, eighteen hours getting the recognition that it did, and for people to also um, know and notice that things are changing in the industry, it's very important because it's kind of saying you know, the challenges, but if you keep pushing and you're resilient, then things will happen. It's a high time that we 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 look at film as a business, you know. Because uh, people say, oh, uh, I have a passion in film. Oh, yes, but passions don't pay rent, to be honest with you. You know, yes, it's a passion, yes, but it should have a means to an end. And uh, distribution, if you're, if you're able to figure out distribution, then I think we'll have a vi very vibrant industry. Again, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't cry so much uh, and say Serkali's idea was as, as it's been our norm. Uh, the government is doing something, but I think they can do better, you know. Well, there have been challenges, but some players say the industry has evolved and visible strides have been made. 
you may remember the character Johnny on Tahidi High. Albert Kimani, who played the character, now highlights some of these strides. I've seen things uh, really, uh, really improve, like how much we were getting that time. I remember that time when we were starting Tahiti, we were getting paid for a main role. For main role, we used to get about 3,000 per episode. The rates have gone up. Uh, people nowadays are making a living out of, uh, out of, out of acting. I know guys who are taking home not less than 200,000 per month purely on just, on just acting. And there is support coming from Kenyans who are now consuming more local productions. I'll also encourage, encourage them in terms of how they receive Kenyan films. They keep up with the momentum. I think we are now seeing a, a very, um, I'll call it a revolution happening in terms of how Kenyans are receiving, uh, are receiving Kenyan content, irrespective of the challenges that might be there. Uh, for example, there are not a lot of cinemas um, spread out in the country. They are mainly concentrated in Nairobi. So yes, I, I encourage Kenyans to keep up with the same spirit because then that's, that's how that's how we'll, we'll have a voice of our own and that's how we will see ourselves in television and in, in, and in film more so. What I know is that there is an audience. That audience has been exposed to Hollywood and to a certain uh, standard of filmmaking. Yeah, in quality, storyline and, and so forth. Now, can we make our own stories in that quality. Yes, we can. And if we do it that way, does it mean that the Kenyans will come to see? We're yet to see. This is an industry that has been projected to grow to $7.7 .7 million by, by 2020. This is a report that was uh, released by PwC early in the year. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an industry that has a lot of potential to grow uh, based on, the, uh, on Kenya's strategic position. Yeah, uh, we have we have talented actors. Yeah, and then if now if, when the government comes in and uh, fights uh, some of these uh, uh, issues that affect uh, the, the the film industry like uh, piracy, it's it's an industry that that will grow. With such projections, then what is the role of the government in harnessing this potential? We would like to have a framework, a legal framework that will be able to guide the industry. Uh, with consideration of the current state of affairs in terms of technology, the environment has changed. The technology, there is uh, aspects of how we communicate, how media is consumed, how film is produced. All those things have to be considered into the new legal framework. When that is done and we have the researches and we have the skills that we require in the industry through capacity building that we always do, I believe uh, we'll be able to achieve the estimated figures. As we understand that what is killing the industry is multiplicity of licenses. You get it from KFCB and then you ask for another. Yet a lawyer who has a national, who has a, a license from LSK, they can represent their clients anywhere. A doctor with a license from the national board they don't need another license when they go to the counties. So we are saying treat filmmakers equally. And we are trying to create this awareness. And I hope this point can come across that film licensing is a national function. And a filmmaker with a license from KFCB do not need, does not need to obtain another film license from the county governments. But right now, being pragmatic, I think we have an opportunity uh, in looking at private sector. I think those are people that we can build an industry with. If you look around, I think you know in some countries, yes, the government bodies have gotten themselves together. They have funding, they have everything. Um, but you know, even in Hollywood, they, they've built their industry using the private sector. With all that said, what is the future of film industry in Kenya? Uh, look at an industry like, like Nigeria or an industry like South Africa. They are able to actually compete uh, globally because of the environment that is there. Uh, filmmakers get to concentrate on the art, you know, 100% making film, uh, because they know uh, the, there's a viable environment whereby somebody can fully depend on film. Uh, that is what we'd like. I would prefer if we move away from a handout 
kind of culture. I don't think we need handouts. We don't, I don't think we need to have free equipment. I don't think we need to have free things given to us. Um, I think what we need is just that investment. And oftentimes, the people willing to go the extra mile are in the private sector. They're actually individuals. So it's about taking whoever is with you at that moment and saying, okay, I want to do something, you want to do something. You see the value in it. Once filmmakers get to continue making content and uh, become more commercial, then we'll have economic power to be able to influence things how we want them. Right now there is an energy, there is a buzz around filmmaking in Kenya and someone out there who is serious about it, this is the time to come in. Um, come make your film, as long as it has an original voice, it, it's telling a, an authentic story then I feel there's always enough room to accommodate everyone. And I think that's, that's kind of the message I would like to pass to everyone is that the film industry is big. We have, we have 40 million Kenyans alone. Um, in East Africa, we have over 150 million people. And every day, people want to consume content and entertainment. So there's always room for anyone to come in and, and excel. And for those who are already in the industry, they should also know that we can all share the space, we can all excel in our own ways, we can all tell our unique stories. Indeed, going by the performance of the Kenyan filmmakers in Lagos, Nigeria during this year's Africa Magic Viewers Choice Awards, and Considering that one of the Kenyan films, Supermodo, has been nominated for Oscars and of course with the local support of Kalasha International Awards, it's no doubt that the Kenyan film industry is headed for greatness. As Jams Media, we wish all the nominees for this year's Kalasha International Awards the very best. Alex Chawada. And don't forget to vote for Chams Media CEO and host of the Chamwada Report and Daring Abroad, Alex Chamwada, who has been nominated for the Best TV Host category. And here is the show that got him nominated, Drone Regulations in Kenya. Drones are here. In the filming industry, security, research, wildlife conservation, and even in medical and humanitarian services. However, the regulations the authority wanted enforced in order to manage the sector are in... On behalf of the entire Charms Media team, I thank you so much for watching the show. And in the spirit of promoting film industry in Kenya, let's consume local productions. My name is Elijah Mwangi. See you next time.